And we are live indeed right now. Boom. Excellent news. So good time of the day, everyone. How is it going yeah. today on everybody's Just side? Beautifully on this time zone right here. Okay. How is the weather? Uh, you know, it's like uh, definitely working better and being nicer than just the extreme summer heat that we normally have. Is it still Almost. possible to cook uh, the eggs? Oh, no. Thankfully, that season is past. That's okay. like normally midsummer. Towards the end of summer, we get like the kind of like humidity style weather. You know, you just go outside and you just instantly soak. It's so nice. <laughs> okay, so it is just humid, but still kind of hot. Yep. More tolerable. Okay, well, yeah, that's uh, great to hear. So, yeah, this is something to uh, be resistant to, I guess. And uh, yeah, at this point, you can enjoy enjoy the weather a little bit more than it was the case. Mm -hmm. yeah you definitely miss the cold when you're away from it and i know just as soon as it's cold i'm like man i wish it was warmer the grass is always greener yeah, on the other side amen exactly so our topic today journaling 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 journaling, journaling. Different ways uh, to do that. I like the word different here. So, because we have several approaches for journaling, which is uh, great because we have a pool to select from whatever suits almost everyone's needs. Right. So what, um, what does it mean to, to the differentness with the different ways? Have you, do you do a lot of different things? Have you researched some different things? Trying them? Um, I don't remember where I've seen this before, like who told that to me, but it stuck with me. And it was like one of the main like things that made me say, okay, I should start journaling. And it, it was a quote that goes, the difference between a dream and a goal is writing it down. Hmm. And journaling is a way that you can take a dream almost and turn it into steps. So now I have like any life goal you want or dream even that like you want to start getting after. As soon as you write it down, it stops becoming a dream and it becomes a goal. Because now hmm. you have like steps towards what you can do to get it. Okay, so you just need to write it down and this will be uh, the first crucial step towards uh, making it happen. This sort of the, the side of journaling that's more so of, of planning purpose, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's uh, more how to, how to achieve the goal. But the journaling can be just a tool on this way. Yeah, exactly. It's like a tool that's like the first step to get you off the couch and like seeing what you can do exactly like first steps you can take uh, towards a business, let's say, or a passion to chase after. I like that. That's, that's an interesting thing. I wasn't thinking about um, you know, coming into today's discussion was the planning side, because that's really powerful. Just those brainstorming or conversational uh, talks around ideas and putting them onto paper and that sort of way of journaling uh, is really powerful. You know, um, I, when I intentionally journal, I don't journal in that way. Okay. That's really cool to think about. So by definition, what is uh, journaling, if we just start uh, with the very foundations? Uh, uh, what is the way you journal towards Aiden? 
like are, do you have steps or is it sort of like a free form writing that you just go about as a form of like expression uh figuring out uh, simple things yeah for me i use journaling as a way to reflect usually and and communicate a little bit so um the ways that i, I journal now that, that um and before I really dive into it, I want to kind of explain. I like the idea of leveraging your strengths and just not trying to fix every single problem you have, but just pour them heavy towards your strengths playing to them. So that's what I do with my um, like routines. I'm a very routine person um, and also very off routines that most of the time too. But so I keep journaling as part of my routines um, to make sure that I'm reflecting and you know doing that intentionally and on a regular basis to kind of hold myself accountable so that's that's how i kind of implement journaling and then the methods uh or the different types like oleg mentioned uh that i do is i do a free writing just once a once a week I sit down and i just write whatever the hell is on my mind just get it out on paper um about the week usually uh, about anything going on uh then also you know i consider a type of journaling at the end of the week when I rate myself. So I have, you know, a set of, like, you know, like 20 odd just words or categories. You know, some are roles that I have or responsibilities or things that I'm working on. And I'll rate myself, honestly, on a scale of one to four. And that helps me um, sort of a way of journaling. It's numerical, but it's similar. Um, and then I also have like a, a morning journal that I do every day. That's just a really quick jot down couple ideas that's like kind of the same idea every day has a framework and then basically i journal there like you know what good that i did the day before and plan to this day for people um and service what i'm thankful for you know my visions who i want to be my values uh what really needs the most work in my life and then what's my most important things when it comes to my time and my money so it's that's what i that's kind of the, the ways that I build it in and hold myself accountable. And those are all kind of reflective, right? Yeah, because like, it's reflective towards you and like your ability to hold yourself accountable, like you said. And especially like when you said like the rate myself system, like yeah. to me that just struck as like, that is like such an inspiring way to hold yourself accountable be like this is an honest conversation like with myself that I can have and that sometimes I like, can be very tough like especially if it's a rough week and let's say you write it down on paper you're like you know this week was rough uh, I didn't go to the gym as much as I should have but then like looking back you're like I could have like given it a little bit extra maybe or even like a source of motivation like this week you've seen uh, like inspiration from like people you love uh, being able to push them in that. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think, Oleg? The rating system is a really good feature. So I never thought about that. That's something probably I should give it a try to in my journaling efforts. So uh, because uh, so far, so the kind of way I would coincide with Aiden's uh, way of journaling would be um, uh, to write down the thoughts which are on my mind. So that's the first type, I would say, of journaling. Let's uh, say, yeah, that's the first type and the most popular type in my universe, which I use, right? So yeah, we can think about uh, different uh, facets of journaling. So, and then what you journal, let's like think about that as uh, one way that uh, we can exercise journaling. So yeah, for me, it would be kind of the reflection uh, of the thoughts. So this uh, reflexive, reflexive journaling as uh, Wahab put it. And yeah, just uh, writing down the thoughts which are on my mind. And um, yeah, so that's uh, how I go about that. So, and then there are some difficulties that sort of show up with that. It's mostly the technical difficulty. 
So how to make sure that the thought is captured and not forgotten, right? Lost in the memory. So yeah, for me, uh, I think that uh, technical aspect is uh, very important actually because I have something almost always on my mind, but need to make sure that it's uh, in there. So, and then that, that that's what kind of you need to be mindful about. So this is why I recommend personally the small notebooks that you can carry around with you almost always. And uh, that's uh, what I once got from Bahab, as a matter of fact. So small notebook was a, a tiny little nice. Winter Soldier book. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's the one. It was a very nice addition uh, to the um, daily life, I would say. And then those thoughts uh, as to me, so I write them down almost every day. So we have a little bit of the difference uh, from Aiden's sort of approach when you have, let's say, one day to write down your thoughts. It's just kind of a random day of writing down the thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to do it on yeah. Sunday. Sunday is, is usually my day of rest well i can't say that because i'm working a lot today but exactly. um, it's usually my day of like usually physical rest anyway and reflecting you know and that's why i use sunday for my, my longer journaling day and i'll also write correspondence with other people uh on sunday as well so via email and um through a couple people that i write letters to like physically um so that's my day where i sort of take it easier on my body, focusing on journaling to rest and reflect. Yeah, it's great. And something that like I've seen be really great with journaling is that very rarely like do people have a sort of outside view of themselves. Like so many times we're just like, okay, I'm looking at this like from my perspective, uh, my point of view. And sometimes like it can be bad let's say when you have like an obstacle or challenges or anything but then having like an outside view is going oh no wait it's that simple i just have to do that instead and as easy as here <laughs> hello 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 our special oh. guest has joined us live oh, i'm you... sorry for showing up late everyone uh just says i failed to start the video for some reason That's okay, we still love you. Oh, thank you. I love you guys too. Aziz, we were just uh, just talking about journaling and when and why. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, no, sorry, sorry. I came in at like a bad time since you guys were talking about this, but uh, you guys want to get me up to speed quickly? <laughs> Well, uh, there is no actually speed, I would say, because we are trying to put together a blanket of what ah. journey is about. And uh, it's everything at, at this point. So tools mm -hmm. uh, for yeah. journaling. So if you think about the technical aspect, that's what kind of like I, I would think about right away because it implies a journal. And uh, what uh, exactly journaling is for you. So yeah, because we don't have a kind of clear, I would say, or universal, not universal, but one set in stone definition of journaling. So in my mind, it was just about making or writing a diary, so to speak. And uh, I think that would be a very general definition, maybe writing down your thoughts so in various ways so it's, it's it's really broad so yeah what is journaling for you journaling for me really um especially now like the past uh, couple of days i'd say more than ever has really been sitting down on a thought getting thoughts and just like first off it's about having these thoughts for and just like thinking about them for like 30 minutes to an hour and then once um like 
I cannot, you know, sit down on these thoughts anymore. That's when the pen and paper come out or like the pen and the diary come out. And that's when I just start writing stuff down. I mean, like it's especially been useful nowadays for me the past few days because it's been all about really just like trying to make use of like so much of the time I have now since I can't go anywhere, since I can't do really anything. So <clears throat> it's been really just like waking up, just like writing down um, what I want to do for the day. It's really more so been like just like trying to read stuff, get uh, get like informed on so many of the things going on out there. And more so like it's been about like personal goals I've been trying to achieve. And like right now we're like a lot at the um, initiating and planning phase of what I want to do and what I want to accomplish. Because then like as time goes by more on like we talk about the next few weeks, next few months, that's when really want to get things going more and more so like right now it's really all about just like thinking about what I want to do and just like planning about what I want to do and then when things move on when when like I'm able to go out and do stuff again then we'll we'll further carry on these things but I mean overall to me journaling is just more so like my my personal thing has been like having a thought thinking about these thoughts for like a long time which I mean sometimes could could be a waste of time but then as soon as the journal and pen come out and start writing stuff down, that's when like ideas just come one after the other. So then I just, we get into this nice flow of just like writing down our ideas. If, if that helps, if that's been like relevant to what you guys have been talking about. Exactly. Oh, yeah. that all counts. I see uh, one of the common topics that we have is the time for journaling. Looks like you mentioned, so we have, you can allot, let's say half an hour or some number of minutes, uh, sit down and then write it down. So I love what Aziz said about getting the ideas out of your head too, because that's something that I'm big on and I use, you know, um, uh, sort of like a planning, scheduling, maintenance, uh, not maintenance, but like a, a tool to capture all my ideas because the saying that your brain is made for creating ideas, not holding on to them, you know. And it'll stress yourself out if you're trying to. Hmm. Okay. Exactly. You write them down and you have also now you will not forget what you were thinking about. Yeah. Yeah, no, and the thing is, like if you have ideas in your head, like you just feel like like I don't know why, like to me, like it just feels like my my brain just starts processing it as like more things I have to do, more things I have to get done which adds to stress, which adds to like, oh no, I have to get this done, I have to get that done. But then as soon as you start writing stuff down, you like realize how like, you're actually not in a, in like a tough situation. You're just, you're just like, you just have a lot to do, but you also have a lot of time. Hopefully we have a lot of time, but like as soon as you write them down and you get those ideas flowing, like you're in a much smoother place than you were before you actually like write down your ideas, write down your, your plans and goals of what you want to do. Exactly. We only have a limited amount of like space in our brain anyways. It's just like opening a computer with too many tabs. After a while, like, you know, you get a slow computer and then it just like has trouble loading and buffering and everything. And it's always nice to just have like one, one window open where that is like, you know, most important thing you need to get done. When you're done with that, just scratch that off the journal get the next tab open that's a very good analogy so yeah once you have some sort of thought in your mind so it's almost like you are opening a new tab right in mm -hmm. your brain computer so then your goal will be just to sort of process it and close it and then you will minimize everything to just one one window right which will be some sort of perception let's say blank blank page Okay, so, and then what, what do we uh, prefer? What are the preferences to make sure that uh, those thoughts are not lost? Can we just, uh, let's say, what's, uh, what's better, electronic or um, paper-based, actually? I'm definitely pen and paper person. Like, to me, it, it, it adds, like, to the level of personal stuff to it, of, like, just writing it down. Okay. Makes, like, uh, for me, it's, it makes it feel like it's personal, um it has more of an effect than just typing it because typing it like i feel like i'm just pressing buttons like a few buttons and that's it whereas writing like i know almost everyone has like completely uniquely different handwritings 
sort of like fingerprints. It's who we are and to see something in your own handwriting. Like I will start my first business, let's say. And then you have like goals written down underneath it, like looks a lot better and feels like it's personal. It's what you're going after. And it's something that you now are sort of like not really BSing yourself on. Whereas to me, it's like typing, like it's sort of like you press a few buttons and then you stare at a screen. Whereas like pen and paper is just like in your hands with you. Yeah, that's uh, great. So I think especially it works uh, if you don't want, let's say, to convert this thought into some sort of typed form. So you just have the notes and then it's for you, right? For the purposes, let's say, of stress removing and then getting it out of your head and closing the tab and then just mm -hmm. having that in writing. So yeah, I, I, I agree. So this paper-based approach is very nice. So, and uh, small notebooks uh, work very nice in this case, because if you move around during the day a lot, then you will be able to carry the small notebook and the pen with you. So at all, at all times, that's, I hope a practical tool that will motivate and help people do the journaling on the go. And uh, that's not uh, that uh, heavy, literally. So it's a uh, very light couple tools only. Yeah, I like what um, you said about not losing your thoughts, you know, like, and, and we were talking about like the different ways and the different aspects or outcomes. And that is totally one that I was thinking about coming into this meeting. So you know, like when I'm journaling, because you don't want your thoughts to be lost. And there's also the other half of it of directing forward. So reflecting back with the reflective journaling, like I do, but then also directing forward with like my morning journal, where it's more about, you know, directing, priming your brain, setting the intention. Okay. That is actually a great aspect because I was thinking about the journaling in a very, I would say, inflexible way. I was thinking, what time of day should I allocate for journaling, morning or evening? So, but now, Aiden, you specifically mentioned morning journaling. I think about evening journaling as well as an institute. So, or department in the Institute of Journaling, let's put it uh, in this uh, fashion. So, yeah, I think it's uh, really cool. Maybe, maybe you can just say, okay, well, let's say five minutes for morning journaling, five minutes for the evening. So, and then it will not be a big dent in your time budget what do you guys think for me personally yeah, you, like yeah oh, well, go ahead no, no, you, you go first for me for me personally like um i i prefer the evening journaling because like evening time is like my wind down time and all and like especially like if you have like a lot going on during the day then sometimes like you can take the day and just like you think about the stuff that's going on, the stuff you have to do. And then your journaling, well, for me personally, like would not be as personal and not be as effective. Whereas like in the evening time, the night time, when it's time to wind down, when it's time to get ready for bed, that's when I like sit down. I just like allocate basically like what I want to start writing down into a journal. So like at like the night time, like my, my brain is a lot less, well, like it's like, it's a lot more de deloaded, a lot less stressed than it would be during the day. So like, I feel like my, my journaling then would be a lot more effective. And like, and also plus like, it's a good way to get the final thoughts out of your head before it's time to go to sleep. Exactly, that's a good point. And then I can also add that apparently there was a study of sorts so that tells that if you write down or even mentally sort of in your mind go through the events of the day for example that's kind of what you're trying to do right you try to collect different thoughts that maybe showed up during the day and then write them down in the evening then it's good for your memory basically so yeah if you try to recall what happened in the day and like maybe you journal about that oh yeah so i felt maybe very inspired in the afternoon for instance what's that right right down right so something like that so yeah it's also good for sort of 
brain training uh, purposes. Yeah, I, I like that. And that's, you know, the major, one of the major benefits of journaling that I was thinking about when I was writing down, you know, ideas for this discussion. And, and one of the things that just sparked my mind when you said that about, you know, it's for improving your memory. So there's this not so clinical psychologist, uh, Ricky, in this show, Trailer Park Boys. And he liked to say that he would keep his brain empty. He would intentionally try to keep as little or as few thoughts in his head as possible. That way his brain would perform better. And it's an interesting concept. Of like if you're trying to remember a million things, you're not going to be able to think about something and then be upset because you forgot something important and you have so much in your head. And like what Hobbs said, then you get stressed. And so that's definitely the, the huge aspect and those outcomes of like, you know, it helping you no matter what, just helping you kind of de-stress a little bit. I feel like it helps you reflect, like you mentioned, gives you new, kind of new perspective, like all I mentioned, helps you remember things. So you just said, also to clarify, because sometimes it's harder to, to think clearly in your head as, as it kind of forces you to slowly put it together on paper that really, really kind of helps you clarify things sometimes, even if it's typing in a computer. Um, and then, uh, like, like I said, it could also be used to prime too going ahead and considering you know new things reconsidering the way you're thinking i guess brings us back to the tab concept so tab or maybe balloons that you pop and then the more you do that so the more liberated yeah absolutely like love the trailer park <laughs> trailer the trailer park, park boys reference was nice yeah. <laughs> and like just just like, to touch on no i'll just continue mm -hmm. yeah um especially like just try to keep an empty brain just because it's so much better to make decisions like even smarter decisions too on just an empty head because it's clear it's calm it's like you have just one path over you you don't have like a swarm just like clouding you and you're just freaking out and just like overreacting to like maybe even little things too and even like going back on like the decision making part i don't know if we touched upon that but like even on like the day and nighttime journaling like let's say like nighttime journaling you could set decisions just to save like tomorrow's energy because even like this thing i saw described that try to minimize the number of decisions you make each day and it will just go by so much better like even small decisions like what to wear what you're eating the next day like even now everything i have for let's say going to the gym or going out it's just like ready and sitting there so as soon as i wake up the next day all i have to do is just grab it and go and then i have an entire day to make better decisions that don't even feel like it's taxing on me like in any level at all yeah so that's all reflected in the journal right mm -hmm. okay so you just need to make sure that it's kind of structured i would say because uh, if you put your entire let's say day into the journal form so like i, I would say it will help to split the piece of paper into sections I'm just thinking about structure and right away how to make sure that it kind of works and then clear cut. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, that, that's that's a really good approach. So you can compartmentalize your day potentially via journaling as a tool. As long as it's structured, it will become very functional. Yeah, and just to further touch upon like the two points mentioned first off by Aiden of like having having like an empty head or like a, a head with like minimal thoughts. I'd say that's like one of one of the things that's like essential to us so we can live basically like good days, healthy days. Because like if you have a lot going on in your head, if you're thinking about so many things, trust me, you are gonna forget a couple of things that were up there. And some of them could be important. So, and I mean, like, if you just like end up clearing your head and you just focus on like the essentials, focus on what's important, and, like, especially if you have a calm head, then you'll be much better at like executing these or like, just like 
de-stressing de yourself and not having to worry about so much because like, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think Bruce Lee mentioned that. He said that the best fighter is always calm. And that's, that's what we are doing dur during our days. Like we are, we are fighters, we're going out there. We're trying to, you know, go, go out there and like, and like fight, fight laziness, fight, um, you know, the urge of just sitting down and relaxing, fight the urge of not wanting to do anything. Like at the end of the day, we all, like we're all ambitious people. We all have things we want to achieve. And like, if we're always stressed, if we're just thinking about a hundred thousand things each day, we're not gonna achieve what we wanna do. But if we're calm, if we're composed, then we can focus on things step by step, you know? Fight the groceries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> okay, Did you say so... hide the groceries? You can also fight with the groceries, yeah. That yeah. Be, uh, <laughs> might be an interesting fight. Don't buy the Oreos, don't buy the Oreos. Probably <laughs> another, another episode, yeah. <laughs> about that. That's always an exciting and relatable topic for a lot of people. <laughs> Another episode should be like urges and temptations and how to resist those. Right. Something less tangible. Yeah. Very much. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we were mentioning actually stress and journaling connection quite a bit, I noticed. And then uh, I was thinking about the morning journaling. That's what I try to do. It doesn't uh, take much time or it cannot take much time because I'm sort of uh, in a very small time window to operate in the morning before I go and then start my day, right? So I would take maybe five minutes to write down the thoughts. And then what I was thinking about is that when you wake up, I think your uh, stress uh, hormone cortisol levels are high. So, and then what I was thinking about is that, so there is a lot of stress and you need to elevate it somehow and using the principles from general chemistry too if you have a lot of stress factor you want to alleviate it and then a way to alleviate it is just to apply the journaling and you have all those stressful thoughts for example in your mind you write them down stress is alleviated you feel better so general chemistry too right here yeah, I think that especially what you guys have been saying and, and what we've been talking about kind of leads to being present, <clears throat> clearing your thoughts, getting peace of mind, being calm. They all push you towards being more in the present, more aware of what's around you. That's and it. Like, That's like, the like, the yeah, like less decisions, more room for thought on what's actually right in front of you and what's most important instead of yeah. other things. Um, and then also, Oleg, you mentioned like not having a lot of time in the morning. And that made me want to bring up the 5 a.m. club book and concept. And it's not necessarily about the time, specifically 5 a.m. It's just about the idea of waking up an hour earlier than, than you'd have to, and spending 20 minutes, uh, you know, on your body, 20 minutes reflecting, and then 20 minutes learning or growing. So that 20 minutes of reflecting, <clears throat> so I always want to do my morning journal. I don't actually journal for 20 minutes. The journal takes me probably two minutes. But what I do there is I, I keep boxes. It's, it's in my printed out schedule every day, um, just built in ahead of time so that like the boxes are like this big. So it's like, I, I, I want to put five words in there. I got to write small. So like that helps me do my regular journaling, but really quickly. And then at the end, that's sort of my setting my intentions. And then at the end of the day is when I do the journal and reflecting. And I just really quickly write down what was like good in the day, what was bad about the day or bad about like my performance, I guess, or what I did that day, what I learned and then what I really loved. Nice. Yeah. So that brings us back to this uh, structuring of the journaling sort of thing. So it looks like it's going to help. I'm thinking so that I want to try actually that's something that could be also that's I think almost what Aiden is using I will just take a page in Wahab notebook this small notebook and I will literally uh, write or draw let's say maybe four bricks over there so and then we will be writing down the reflections for the day into every particular break. So maybe it's gonna be, let's say 
four bricks in the morning and then every brick will stand for something. It's gonna be small and then I will not have to write a lot in there, but just essential, essential things, let's say about the one brick will be accomplishments, targets for the day, for instance. The other one will be mm -hmm. worries of the day. The third one will be fears of the day. And the fourth one will be, I don't know, rewards of the day. Let's say, okay, well, here you go. Just a sim simple structure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. wait. Mm -hmm. Uh, you also said uh, like drawing and that, that really stuck with me because yeah because even like doodling or sketching on a journal like is such a great like stress relief factors like you can uh, just do free drawing free sketching just like see where your pencil or pen takes you uh, other times you can like uh, draw the view from outside your window or your favorite coffee shop or restaurant and these drawings I actually got from a video game character who does that in his journal uh, in Red Dead Redemption 2. Like your character keeps a journal like as you play the game. So at any time like he's freaking out that like, you know, a bank robbery went wrong and like write it down in his journal. And then he'll like just draw stuff that happened like along the way. And that was really cool. Like it's something you can completely miss out from the game but like it gives you the option like to look at this character's journal and he writes his sort of like doubts about himself he writes almost everything like we've talked about today even as well like his thoughts and fears are all there and sometimes it's when you write it down in paper you can just see like oh like i'm freaking out over a little thing and it's funny because okay. like he even he even mentions that in the game as well he's like oh we don't have food I can just go hunting. It's no big deal. Why am I freaking out? Yeah, drawing drawing helps, um, actually. Mm -hmm. In my uh, case, what I was thinking about drawing is I enforce uh, myself to draw, let's say, just one smiley face uh, in the journal. Yeah. And then what I was thinking about that is that uh, if I want to set the positive attitude, let's say for the day, if I would say in the morning, right? I would just draw this smiley face. It's a circle with two eyes and the mouth, that's it. So that would set the positive attitude. So that was just my uh, approach behind drawing. It's, it's a very targeted, specific and purposeful <laughs> drawing. <laughs> I like that. I was doing <clears throat> a little bit of research before and I found a similar thing about if you ever, you know, do sit down to journal, but you don't know what to write, you just start drawing, just start doing something, even whether it's a picture, diagram, scenery, it just might help get the juices flowing. Like, I think, you know, what the best, coolest part about it could be just that physical act of, you know, putting pen to paper. Like we said, it's not the same on the computer. You could still have some of the same benefits on a computer, but that what we were talking about, like having a, a good journal or, and, and maybe a good pen or a good pencil, um, really just the act of getting them to meet will get the juices flowing and make it start easier. You know, break down the wall in between you and the trying to think of the first perfect sentence to write. You know, it's difficult sometimes. So I think, you know, uh, holding yourself accountable really is a little bit easier if you just, um, you know, could, could start with pictures if you don't know what to do and, and have a nice pen and paper. So it's like, that's also maybe a, a positive aspect about it. So I'm going to look forward to, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Another thing that I found um, when I was researching was to, uh, and I, this is actually something that I've been doing for my weekly journaling, but I never thought about it until I was, doing this research and I was like, oh, I, I didn't realize that I was doing that. And that's, that's helped me a lot, which is coming up with like a routine start. You know, here I am. I'm huge on routines, right? So coming up with like a routine start, it really helps you because 
you don't have to worry about what's the first thing to write. You already have your sentences down on paper and you're already into it and going. Um, so like a routine start that I'll do would be that like, like for my weekly journal, a lot of times I do like life is blank. And I try to pick a word and then like sort of explain why I picked that word, you know? Um, and, and I'm, you know, it's part of the honesty I'm trying to be honest with myself. Like sometimes I'm like, you know, life is shitty today. It happens. And you know, it's a roller coaster. Everybody has bad days. So or bad times at least, and whether for you, that's a bad week or a bad hour. Uh, it, it comes in different ways, different sizes. So that's what I do is life is blank and then explain why, but then that's already like, it's already, I'm already diving deep into, <laughs> into my life just with that easy little trigger. So things like that, but it doesn't have to be that. It could be, you could start by journaling what the weather is or journaling, you know, the good, bad part of the day or journaling what you just heard about the world or a friend or a family. Yeah, it's very powerful in the sense that you can uh, modulate journaling, right? So you can be, for example, journaling about your life. Let's say uh, you can be very honest about that. And then you can also journal in the way that uh, you're okay with, with sharing that with everybody else. So yeah, you can choose choose your ways to journal. Yeah. So yeah, to journal about the weather, that's that, that might as well be a good start, I think. So if you let's say don't know, oh, what should I journal about, right? So you can journal about the weather. So then this will get the ball rolling. It will kick start, kick start your journaling. Actually. Exactly. Because yeah, that's uh, that could be a problem for many people, I would assume. That was a problem for me. So yeah, because I, maybe I have some thought. But when I sit down and journal about that, it is just a blank page and it's hard to uh, recall exactly what I was thinking about. And I thought it would be great to write it down, but then I didn't have a notebook with me. So uh, due to some reason, then you can just uh, start writing about your ambient environment, such as the weather, for instance, and then that, that should help. So. Uh, I think it's important to have some sort of trigger, which will get you into writing down those deeper thoughts about, let's say, yourself. So that would be it. Like, uh, like what Hobby said, it's, it's minimizing the decisions. It's, yeah. uh, you sit down and it's like the first time you journal, you're like, oh my God. Yeah. They come up with the best sentence ever. What am I, if I had to pick one sentence to describe my whole life right now, how would I do it? It's like, no, just take the decision out of it. Okay. And write, write about the weather. So like the weather too, to clarify, you could say just one weather that week. So for example, this past week, we had a freaking hurricane here. Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't around for it, but um, you know, you can start with that. Just one thing about the weather. Or this day, it was really freaking hot and I sweated. While I was working. <laughs> That's what and the journalists look like every day. Here. You feel, <laughs> like, you're already getting into how you feel and there you go. <laughs> the juicy stuff, you know? Okay. Yeah, actually, the weather can uh, kind of impact how you feel. That is true. So, okay, well, yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, like <laughs> with the touch more upon, like, up, upon upon the weather. I mean, like, yeah, like for like the next week. Now, I'm not gonna know what the weather outside is like. But just like just looking look outside. No, yeah, I mean, it's it's cloudy, but I don't know if it's hot or cold or humid or dry. But it's it's cloudy, and like cloudy, I guess makes it that you're more tired, that you're more drowsy, but yeah, that's fine. Okay, well, yeah, here we go. So yeah, that's, uh, I think, a very simple and practical tool. So yeah, very specific. Just start with the weather, maybe one sentence, and then you already think about how you feel, and then you will get to those thoughts which you were desiring to write down, but could not due to some reason. Okay, well, yeah. Let's, uh, yeah, let's uh, give it a try. I'm definitely going to give that a try this week. See what happens if I start with the weather sentence and <laughs> this will bring me to the, to the pith of the journal, which would be sort of to dive deeper into what I think for that day.
another one of those great starters is a first. You know, every day is so crazily different. Every week yeah. is different. Even if you're doing the same job and eating the same thing, like there's always something new. And so that's something if you, especially if you do like a weekly or less or more periodic journal, is start with something that you just did the first time and talk about how it went. You know, you know, for you know, for example, like yesterday, uh, oh, like we had a Turkish breakfast. It was, you know, it was the first time I'd heard about that. So I just started talking about that. Or like it might be the first time that you met somebody that week, or the first time that you tried this food. And that's also a good way to, to help reflect on things you wouldn't normally think heavily about, or that you just tried and have a chance to think more about it. And then lastly, what I found um, online was to have a list of topics. Like we, like we do here, I mean, this is, could be considered journaling right now if you're really gonna get uh, mm -hmm. sick about it. So, I mean, the, the list of topics that we have, right? That can really just help you with homework. Um, and so the first time you journal, instead of writing something great or perfect or magnificent that should be published, just write down a bunch of things that you wish you thought more about or want to learn more about or want to think more about, whatever. And then once you have that list, that could be your starting point. You sit down and be like, okay, today I'm going to journal about this thing that I, that I wrote down originally and then work through that list. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, we should not just really think about the weather <laughs> as a starting point to write about. So, uh, and then a list of topics definitely help. That's uh, something we should uh, uh, consider at all times. What I was also writing, for example, uh, I, let's say, I wanted, so my topic to write about was to wake up earlier on more days in a week and then that's something I was just writing down about uh, almost every day so I want to let's say I could literally have written down I want to wake up early uh, tomorrow for example and then I was doing that for the course of uh, some time and then eventually there came a point when I started waking up early uh, for the majority days of the week so speaking of topics to choose and write about so you might as well write about something that you want and then just use this one sentence day approach and then it might it might as well help you to actually build a habit so speaking of the um, benef beneficial features of journaling because i think you hold yourself accountable that's what Aiden mentioned. Right. Yeah, it's a good way to practice discipline, too. Yeah. <laughs> discipline equals freedom. Go get some. Hashtag. Discipline is <laughs> your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, it's in all seriousness. It does apply there. You know, it doesn't necessarily apply to everything, but I think it does here. It's that, you know, if you're disciplined with your thoughts, you're able to hold yourself accountable to write them down, you have freedom of thought, freedom to think more fluidly. Yeah. Presently. I think the journaling in itself, just uh, journaling about whatever, let's say if you don't want to kind of uh, go on a deeper dive in journaling, but uh, yeah, just uh, you can write about simple topics and then you can allocate, let's say two minutes a day or five minutes a day to journal about that. And then that could be also a tool to develop your discipline, just the physical act of journaling for a fixed amount of time, six days a week. Um, some, I want, I want to touch on one of the ways I journal sometimes. And like, I don't know if you guys want to try that or not, but like, there are ways people journal. Like, I don't know if you guys say, like, if you talk in the first person, like I, this, I, that, um, sometimes what I do is yeah. I, I, I like, I like write down Aziz, like Aziz has to do this and this and that, oh. you know, and like, and like the way, the way like that this makes me do, it's like, it puts me in this perspective that like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like thinking about a character thinking about anyone really. 
but kind of in the shoes of myself. And like, think about the character that you sympathize for, that you want to do well. You think about the character that you want to grow, that you want to see that character develop, except that character is you. Like, let's say you watch, you watch a good TV show, a good movie, and you get attached to this one character. You want this character to have the best outcome, you know? Instead, like when I journal, I picture myself as me being that character. Like I want the best outcome for, for myself. And sometimes when I think about like the perspective of the first person, like I this and I that, like it doesn't give me as much of a sense of urgency when I put it in the perspective of like, oh, I want this character to do well. I want this character to be the best he can be. And that character is myself. Wahab has been a lazy piece of shit last year. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, like together, Aziz, together, Aziz, has not, <laughs> Aziz has not been doing well this week. Aziz needs to focus more on this, this, and that. <laughs> like, why does Aziz need to do this? Because, because, because I want the best outcome for Aziz, you know? I like that because it's really hard to get to that, that third-person perspective, usually. Hmm. It's difficult to think about yourself in that way, you know? It's, it's like the same that, like, I forget how exactly how the saying goes, but it's a concept that you always, it's always easier for you to know what's best for somebody else rather than to be able to see yourself in that much clarity. And yeah, and that's why like the people who give the best advice usually don't take this advice for themselves. So like when you start, when you start thinking about yourself as another person, you can judge that person easily more. You can say, well, like you can point out the flaws of that person more easily because like we because like us as human beings we suck at pointing out our own flaws but like when you start seeing yourself from like a different point of view then like you can know like then yeah like it's easier more to like think about yourself more think about what's right what's wrong and what you want to do basically this is a great point and then i think it's uh uh, universal, universal uh, in the world when you can uh, look at yourself uh, from the outside perspective, actually, and then and this tool, which as he just mentioned, will uh, help a lot. If you just start writing about, let's say, yourself, not as I, but uh, was it a third, third person? As like a character you've been witnessing the life of, yeah, basically. That's right. So yeah, you kind of get outside of yourself and look at yourself from the outside. Yeah. Wow. Because then yeah, it, that's because, point. Yeah. Yeah, because then a part of my French, like you you tend to like incorporate and add less less bullshit into like yourself. Because I mean us, we get we get very like defensive about ourselves sometimes. But then like when you just start pointing yourself out as someone else. And yeah, like you can easily tell that person more like you're doing this wrong. You need to focus on this more. You need to get your shit together and all. And then like, yeah, like you start to like execute more, I guess. But like, that's, that's how it's been with me. Like, and it's, and it's been working. Yeah, so no, that's great. Yeah, that's what also characters, let's say, in, in games do, right? So they have a very focused objective. So within the game and then just go and execute. So yeah, you can think about yourself as a character under yeah. uh, conditions when you journal from the it relates it relates to what we were talking about earlier with the different types or being reflecting journaling imaginary journaling drawing journaling quick note journaling or just ex just getting your thoughts paper instead of in your head journaling and that kind of hits on what i was talking about earlier about the rating system it's like, it just makes you be brutally honest with yourself. It's kind of like, you know, you're your own boss giving a report on your, like, you know, your semi-annual performance review almost for, for mm -hmm. Aziz to say, if I were Aziz's boss in life for everything, this is what I would think about how he's been doing and this is what I think he needs to do. I, I, that's a, a really good idea that I'm going to exactly. definitely try out this week and see, see how it goes. Yeah. So I'm going to try to implement the serrating system as well. So, yeah, I'll, I'll rate myself during, maybe even today, actually. So there are many things I can rate myself on. So uh, I- It's my professor, but rate yourself. So, yeah, that is already going <laughs> to <not> an A. <laughs> so, I will 
<laughs> but yeah, it, it's okay. So today I, I had to sleep in anyway. So I was allowing myself to do it. So I'm allowing myself to sleep in now for the next week so I can focus on recovery. Oh, okay. That's key. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, yeah. that's a good approach. So yeah. I'll still go with just one sleep and day, but not not too much of that. Okay, so yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, I think <coughs> was mentioning how uh, you uh, sort of use uh, journaling to hold yourself accountable. So I think uh, I'm still here. Okay, good. So yeah, uh, what I do is that uh, actually it's uh, kind of interesting to go back uh, and then read what you wrote in the past about yourself, right? So in line of your journal and, and see how things uh, changed, right? How they were, let's say a month ago, a year ago, depending on your thickness of the journal. And uh, yeah, that's almost like this uh, chronological book of sorts, a log, a log of your life, if you will. And uh, yeah, you can see what was happening, what was on your mind, and then how things are right now. So that's kind of interesting, and it gives you the like, very clear, documented way to see what happened in your life. Certainly. And I, I do that a little bit with my schedules too. And I feel like, I don't know if it's that I've actually been growing as a person at a faster rate, just in general, since I started journaling, scheduling and whatnot, quite possibly, but you, you see it, you know, concrete evidence. You can look back and read it and see, like, see what was important to you. What were you worried about? Right. What were you thinking about and planning? What did you not know was going to happen? Good and bad it's that's that's very cool and i'm glad i started journaling for that reason i only started at the beginning of 2020 uh that january so i, I can't look back too far but i look back at that i mean that was uh, you know 20 months ago now that was so different some of my perspectives on things it's wild <laughs> wow yeah that's that's interesting uh so i think what i was thinking if I, let's say, go back and then read my journal and uh, what uh, I do a lot is that uh, I put down, I write down about deficiencies in my life, which I want to fix. And uh, I just write down uh, what is uh, deficient uh, on a particular day or week, month and life in general. Right. And then uh, I go and uh, solve this problem. So I apply this problem solving mindset. And then the journal uh, is kind of an accountability tool because it uh, keeps me on the uh, toes and then makes me think. So if I go back and then write, and read about that, okay, well, there was something bad, let's say a month ago. And then I read about this a month later and it's still bad. Okay, well, uh, I would not feel good about myself. So it will kind of keep me uh, motivated to change the situation to the better. So it's, it's a kind of, Maybe later, something that pu will push you forward to change something, let's say, bad in your life to the better. Because you don't want to you know, like read bad things about yourself all the time. Yeah, that's yeah. why you think about yourself as someone else. Like you watch a movie or a TV yeah. show, like why why you like a character and why you don't like another character. Some days you can like yourself, other days you don't like yourself, and you just have to point out why. And sometimes that's like the hardest thing to do to ourselves, like because we tend to get defensive about ourselves. But yeah, okay. Yeah, you think yourself, you think about yourself as someone else, then you can point out the deficiencies, like you mentioned, or like easier, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Third person view. That's a powerful approach. Yeah. Less less bullshit in that uh, sense for me. <laughs> Okay, so well, I think we have a good uh, set of sides which we use to look at journaling. So we are just approaching the time limit, to be to be honest. So, yeah, I do have uh, I do have another meeting that I got to go to. But do you, do you want to conclude, Oleg? Yeah, closing remarks. Yeah. I would like mm -hmm. to conclude. I would like to uh, say that this podcast episode was sponsored by nothing and nobody. 
<laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Explains. That's why I got nothing for free. <laughs> awesome. But uh, in, in all honesty, this podcast episode was sponsored by uh, our passionate attitudes uh, to life. I like that. How about yeah, like to that? the passion attitude of life and to the betterment of the self? Of course. One percent. One percent every day. Exactly. Of course. <laughs> Next steps now, we're going to go make ourselves a very tasty breakfast that we cannot taste. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, that's quite a predicament, but it's all about nutrition at this point. So. Yeah, I don't care if I cannot taste. It's okay. Yeah. It's temporary. Down the beets and Brussels sprouts while you can. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna eat an onion just like I would an apple. <laughs> you're an ogre anyway so we are going yeah. to uh, stop any other closing uh, uh, plugs and remarks nothing from me something thank you guys yeah thank you guys yep. excellent great session we will Thanks. touch base again soon i hope yes Indeed. yeah all right guys take care have a good day have a great day. See you everyone. soon. You too. Bye-bye. Stop. Yeah.